Hi there and welcome back to this channel. I recently got a comment that said, is it possible to make a simulation reaction for steam reform methane with water gas shift reaction on the same worksheet? And to answer you, yes, it is very much possible. This is an approach I went about. I sat down on it, thought about it, brainstormed, and this was the approach that I came about. Um, and also being mindful of the chemical reactions that will be taking place and the phase changes that are also occurring here. This is an approach that I ended up going with. But if you have something better, look, you are more than welcome to re-modify this to suit your desires and what you wish to produce or achieve as an output result. So yes, let us go through this simulation together. But before we start with our simulation, as you know, we need to look at our property packages, right? So the property package simply means the chemical compounds that are involved in order to achieve your desired output. I decided to say, you know what, we'll be having three um, reactions taking place and the compounds that are involved here will be methane, water, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and, and methanol. And the model said here that was best fit for this compound was Payne Robinson. And then secondly, it's the reaction package. Now we are going to choose the reactions that will be taking place in our simulation that will be, um, be involved. So we need to specify all of them. So the first reaction that we need to specify is the steam methane reforming reaction. So for the steam methane reforming reaction, the compounds that are involved here is methane, water, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen. The reaction that will be taking place here, keeping note that for our reactants, we always say it must be a negative, and for our products, it must be a positive. So the chemical balanced formula for steam methane reforming is basically reacting methane plus water to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which is the reaction that you guys are seeing here. And secondly, the reaction that I wanted to look at here is the water shift reaction. So for our water shift reaction, we are basically going to specify our compounds, and that is carbon monoxide, water, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. The reaction that will be taking place here, it basically says that's the balanced chemical formula, guys, not me. The formulation says carbon monoxide plus water will give you carbon dioxide and hydrogen at one mole each, because these are the reactants, negative, and these are the products, positive. Lastly, can look at our final reaction that will be taking place here, and it is the MSR, the methane steam reforming reaction. Sorry, this one here. The compounds here, I decided to specify all the compounds that we'll be talking about, and the reactions that will be taking place here. The first reaction that was identified was carbon monoxide, negative, can you see? Reacting with two moles of hydrogen, can you see? To produce methanol, positive one. The second reaction here, it's basically when we say carbon dioxide, and that will be minus one, as you can see. Reacting with three hydrogen gas, I mean moles, as you can see, minus. To produce methanol and water, each at a positive, because they are products. Honestly, this reaction does not form methanol, but I decided to add it as well. And that is when we have carbon dioxide with hydrogen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, now that we've looked at the compounds and we've looked at our reactions, let us go to the simulation. I'm going to try my best to take you guys through the simulation and approach that I went about. Guys, you have to be very mindful that a simulation, it's what we are trying to replicate that could possibly take place in a real life plant. So unfortunately, Coco simulation, Aspen as well, most of these simulations, they limit us. They don't have storage tanks, right? So, but we could actually um, improvise if we wanted to put in storage tanks, but keep in mind, visualize as we go through this plant that we are simulating it, but in real life, there'll be tanks that will be in place. For example, we could have had a tank here for the water that we store that goes into our process. We could have also had a tank here for our methane that we store that goes into our process. And we can mix one more, or let's rather say 100% of methane, um, as pure as possible, rather let's just say that, with pure water, without impurities as possible, mix them together to produce 0.5 fraction each, right? Then we know that 
from our reaction itself. It says that when we react to methane and water, we can produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. But also from school, we learned that this reaction is favorable at high temperatures. So we will have to find a way to increase our temperature. And in a real life plant, guys, it's always amazing. If you as an engineer, you can say, let us save energy by improvising or using the energy that we have in the system. And how are we going to do that? We are going to use heat from the system and say economizer. So this economizer here will basically heat up this stream here, stream number one, exchange heat with this stream that's very hot to increase stream number two's temperatures. That's all. We did not apply any steam or anything like that. So in real life, we always want to try and save our company's money by improvising and using steam and energy saving projects. So this is one of them. Um, yeah. Then number two, we are going to then take this 50% fraction of methane and water into our reactor. Now, our reactor will take place at high temperatures, but we tried our best to literally increase our temperature size possible so that the steam of this reactor doesn't, we don't have to apply too much um, heating system here, rather, so and we can um, save energy in some type of way. Um, yeah, so we are going to use less energy to heat up from 350 to 450. Our reaction takes place and you'll see that we are now beginning to form hydrogen. Um, some um, carbon monoxide formed today, carbon dioxide also formed and our reactants reacted, but not as we wanted them to. We are going to have our first flash column and um, please allow me to double click into these units so that I can show you guys the inputs that I went about. So for this unit here, I specified the outlet temperature and that is our reactor. It then calculated the heat duty that will be required. I decided to specify the compounds that will be taking place here by just clicking here and specifying reactive compounds. And then next, it's the flash column. The flash column, I decided to actually specify the Baker fraction and it calculated for me the temperature and the heat duty this can be achieved at. And we then therefore separated water that we can take back to our system and some other compounds that we can further continue with within our simulation. And these compounds are these ones, as you can see them. They will go into our second reactor, which takes place at a very high temperature. Even here, I only specify the outlet or the operating temperature and it specify the heat duty that we required to achieve that. Now we did react some methane, it reduced, as you can see here, yeah, we formed more now of our hydrogen, right? And we also have more now of our carbon monoxide. Then this heat is too high. Let, we can't just take it here because this one is going to happen at low temperatures. So let's use the heat within the system before we cool this stream down. So we are going to steal that energy source. Um, and reduce it to 25 degrees, which is fantastic. That's amazing. That's fabulous, guys. So this one from 25 went to 350, and this one from 700 went to 25. That's great, right? Because it's still going to go lower because this operation takes place at a very low temperature. So at this low temperature, hydrogen was favored and it was produced. Hydrogen was produced, and here, as you can see, we have at least 90% of hydrogen produced and some other um byproducts that, not necessarily byproducts because we still need them, that were also produced. And then in this bottom stream here, we have some methane and water, also some carbon monoxide that we are taking back to our system. And I'll show you just how. Now, we are going to have another column. For this column, I basically specified the um, what is it, the duty that will be taking place, and then it then did the inverse, specified for me the fraction that will be required, so that's basically 0 0.9, we could have easily imputed, so computed 0 0.9 here, and we've calculated everything else for us. From this flash, we were able to produce some carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Now, the carbon monoxide, as you can see from this formula here, three moles of hydrogen will always be more that's produced versus the carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide was produced, but not at, at a high rate as hydrogen. So because now we want to go to the second phase, so that we react the carbon monoxide that was produced and the hydrogen that was produced, to form methanol, we need to feed this at least for one mole of carbon monoxide, we need to feed two moles of hydrogen. So this is at three. So then I included a splitter here just to separate the, the small fractions, right? So some of the hydrogen will go to the storage tank, we we'll either we sell it or we we'll use it back in our system to produce methanol. But basically, that is what's happening here. So the methanol is then produced. 
And I noticed something very interesting, guys, that I want to show you. On this splitter, it's influenced by the, how much we are reacting this hydrogen with carbon monoxide together. If we react a lot of hydrogen with carbon monoxide together, we will produce some methanol and some hydrogen will still be in our stream. But if we say we are re reacting a certain portion of our carbon monoxide and hydrogen together, and there will be at a split of 85% splitting these two streams here, we do experience some carbon monoxide. So I chose to go with carbon 85% split because it favors carbon monoxide still being present in the stream here. And I wanted to use it in this third plant here. So we are going to react this carbon monoxide and a very small portion of hydrogen together to produce methanol. And some few products are there, which is carbon monoxide and methanol, methane, sorry. Now, if we take this within our ChemSub column, let me just show you how our ChemSub column was computed, edit. Our ChemSub column, the operations here, I specified that it will be a flash. I specified our thermodynamic properties. Also specified our pressure parameters here. It's very low pressure, room temperature. Yeah, and calculated the results for us. Um, this particular reactor here, it's also occurring at just not too high temperatures. And then it calculated the heat DT for us. And this is basically the mixer. For the splitter, how it looks, I basically just specified the splitting fraction. If I said it's open A2, that's what I was talking about, that we'll still find some hydrogen in the stream here, which I honestly don't want hydrogen here because on our next plant, we don't want to, we don't really need it to produce what we want. It's, what is it? It's automatically going to be a byproduct that will be produced. So this was plant one. This is now plant two where the second chemical reaction is taking place. Now let's go to our third reaction that's taking place and it is. Wait first, before we get the this column here, we are going to produce pure methanol as possible at 99% and pure carbon monoxide as possible at 99%. From then on, we are going to mix this carbon monoxide with water, which then yields this reaction here, which is the water gas shift reaction to form carbon monoxide and water. It produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen. If we react this two. As you can see, when we mix them, no carbon dioxide was produced, hence we have a reactor. After we react this particular two products here, which is water and carbon monoxide, some small portion of carbon dioxide was produced and a small portion of hydrogen, as well as methanol. Methane was still there as well, and carbon monoxide that didn't react last thing. So if you give it time, we might well find the best optimum temperatures or the heat DT that's relevant to produce or yield a higher quantity as possible. I then have another flash column here. I just want to show you this particular Gibbs reactor. This particular Gibbs reactor, I decided to specify the reaction package. And if you specify the reaction package, you basically click on this tab here and then go to your reaction package and choose that particular reaction that's taking place. Stream off, then goes to the flash drum. And then from the flash drum, we have produced a small fraction of carbon dioxide at 63%, as we have another one just to separate. And then we we're able to purify it as much as possible. We actually got, let's see, this is stream CO1. Yeah, I actually confused my streams. One second, guys. This stream here, it's the CO2 that was produced. And then this one here will be the CH3OH that is produced. That is produced. My apologies, guys. So we actually have, um, what is it? Vapor carbon dioxide and liquid methanol. Got it. So this here is in its liquid form. And this one here, 
since vapor form. If we run this file, guys, this is what we get. Yeah, that was a lot of streams that we have there. Literally have to scroll to the other side just to see the streams. Yes, guys, so this was the approach and I really, really hope it makes sense. I will try my best to do this manually because I know it also helps someone if I literally compute it manually for them. It is quite, uh, it's, 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 there's a lot happening on the simulation. Um, I wanted to move the stream there. We could have easily recycled the stream back, guys, but it, it makes our simulation very messy. Now it has to cross lines and boundaries, you know? In real life situation, guys, such streams would literally go into our storage tanks, you know? And we literally could be recycling most of this methanol back to our system. Um, yeah, this water goes into the storage tank and recycling it back into the system. Similarly here, guys, we could be um, recycling back this hydrogen into our system by first putting in the storage tank, then into this particular system here. So please do try to visualize these plants as we work on them. Yes, it's a simulation, but try and um, visualize how it would take place in a real life scenario. I really hope this makes sense. This was so fun to solve. I really enjoyed solving it because it was quite complex and there was a lot that was just happening, you know, so it needed some applications and and and, and understanding in, in order to really get the desired output. If the, you found this video very useful, do comment down below. If you also would like a particular simulation to be done, just comment down below and I might also work on your request. Thank you so much for your time. Till next time. Bye.